Every year in the period known as August comes a gathering of all the gamers in the United States. That time has come again for another Gen Con. I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes, and that ominous introduction was correct. We're here at Gen Con 2016 to bring you all the coverage we possibly can. Today, we are giving you just the details on the Trade Day event, which is before the actual convention opens up with the show floor and all the cool exhibits. This is yes. just a taste. Th that's when the blood battles begin in order for all the exclusive games. <laughs> that's right. So this is just a little appetizer, much calmer right now, just giving you the that. Kind of Calm before the storm. No gigantic things here. We did get to see a couple of cool events from a couple of cool publishers. And one of them, I think, is a pretty big deal. One of them is actually a pretty big deal. And also, before we get into it, just if you don't know, be sure to check us out Twitter at RollForCrit and RollForCrit.com slash Gen Con 2016. That's where all the really big stuff and more videos are going to be coming later on. So, let's start though. You did an event that I did not get to check out, which was from Paizo of Pathfinder. Yes, that's correct. So if you don't know the Pathfinder game, it's one of the, uh, I would say one, uh, probably the top two of the biggest <laughs> role-playing the games. Two. It's either one or two. <laughs> yes, depending on who you ask, I'd say it's one or two <laughs> yeah. of, in the role-playing world. Uh, we were we actually had a video last year about them. That's right. And talked about some of the stuff they there brought. And uh, I would say the big theme for that one was the psychotic, uh, the, not psychotics, the psionics. Right, psionics. <laughs> uh, psychotics actually would be more this year. Okay. But um, we're gonna use that as the segue. And this one, the one, the big they showed a lot. But I say the big things that stuck with me is the first one was the their horror adventures. Okay. What this book does is it actually has no new classes. I think the last one, which was actually. Um, Ultimate Intrigue brought the Vigilante, which we talked about last time too, but they talked about it here because I think it actually came out in 2016. Okay. Which, if you don't know, really cool. Uh, it's a class that, in essence, it's almost like a guy who uh, you have a. It's like Batman. You have your Bruce Wayne and your Batman, and you're you're so split that you people cannot understand. You can't see you as the other character. Like if you do a morality check on them, they're whatever that that state they're not their other half. Right, <laughs> but this set and it which sort of ties in with that okay. the horror set. I think. Like a Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. Yes, perhaps. I think it'd be perfect for this. <laughs> uh -huh. The horror set doesn't introduce any new classes, but what it introduces is almost like a um, a way to bring things, whether it's uh, you know Cthulian Lovecraft horror or whether it's just like slasher films in India. And one of the big yeah. things they introduced, which I think would be interesting, especially for you, because you actually are already know, running our campaign, is a way to almost like tempt. I would I forget the exact name of the mechanic, but it's pretty much like tempting the heroes. Huh. Like uh, the example they use, like they have all over for whatever sto your story fits. But like, if you're bitten by a vampire and then you wake up the next day and you know the sun hurts you a bit more, but you feel stronger, do you accept the temptation? I think it was and you like okay. and you can be like, yeah, I do. And then like you don't know what that's gonna happen. Like you can change your morality or like huh. you get a whole new stats and stuff. So it's not just you know some things might be like, oh, I got a mummy's hearse, I gotta go back to a clerk. No, now that might actually mean something. That might really actually write the story or something. Okay, deeper consequences and yeah. lots of new, a variety of themes that are possible. Yeah, and I think that sounds amazing. Uh, they also talked about they're actually officially going to, which sort of ties in with this, going to have a Cthulian book. I forget the name. It's like um, Ethan's Wave or something. You know, very Cthulian title. Mm -hmm. But like that actually takes... Not only takes a lot of the open range uh, Cthulhu stuff, you know, King and Yellow, which they actually brought up, which to me when I heard that I was like, oh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Cthulhu. But they actually, like, talked with the guys from the Call of Cthulhu huh. RPG. I forget the name of the people. But, like, have some of their copyrighted monsters and stuff in here, too. So you got a really nice, good chunk of people who like love Cthulhu and really make it. And to, okay. they do take some of that, remember the horror stuff I told, told mm -hmm. you? Which, of course, is very Cthulhu. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> um, in there. And I did ask this, though. You do not need the horror book. You can just go with the Cthulhu. But obviously, I mean, you want, you should get both. I mean, they, they, go, they feel like they go so well. They're like there. peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, you can't have them that separate. They're like gross, horrifying blood jelly <laughs> and tentacle peanut butter. Um, and then there's a whole other brand new crazy universe they're exploring also. Yes, correct? but before I get there. Uh, all right. Yeah, you I tried. In. You jumped in a little. I was really we'll excited. Get there. Well, because, because the connecting with the whole curses and stuff, they're mm -hmm. actually releasing the mummy, uh, the pharaoh, like mummy's curse or I forget mm -hmm. what it was, card game. You mean the, for the adventure card yeah, game of Pathfinder. which was really cool. And they're actually releasing some new classes and stuff, as you know, the class decks. Two of them are goblins. 
so you can now start playing with goblins. Okay. And to help uh, push that forward, they're doing like the Pathfinder Adventure card game will have a special, like the society will have a special called Year the Goblin, or the Season of the Goblin-like event. Okay. So you can get used to your goblin guy before the Pharaoh uh, set is released. There's also a digital version that also came out as well. I don't know if you heard about that. Now, we'll jump to what you want to talk about, because right. honestly, it's the other really <laughs> awesome thing. It's the big news. Yeah, so if you know Pathfinder takes place, you know, almost uh, fantasy world. Medieval, mm -hmm. typical Tolkien-esque. Right. But uh, what if you didn't want that? What if you wanted, you know, more Star Wars, Firefly oh, style? What would I do? <laughs> well, you'd get their new book coming out, uh, Starfinder. This one actually takes place in the Pathfinder universe. Okay. But, like, I think it was 15,000 years in the future. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> they actually have, like, apparently a while ago, like, they released, like, different planets books. Because, you know, people usually go different planes, but they actually released a book about the different planets in the Pathfinder world. Mm -hmm. They actually got the same guy from that to come back here. And, like, one of the planets disappeared completely. You don't know why. Okay. <laughs> it's like, the, it was, the, I think, I forget the name of the planet, but the humans are now on a space station. You have still have magic and stuff, so they're still, like, magic users. Little Battlestar Galactica? A little <laughs> bit, yeah. And the way it works is actually you are a crew of a ship, and you actually have to work on your ship as well as, like, your, your own character. So you'd be upgrading your ship in addition to, you know, yourselves. Okay. This one will co will release the same way, like with the hardcover core book. Um, I think they called Alien Databases their bestiary. Okay. And uh, I think some pawns. It won't be released as often, like you know, the Pathfinder has the books and all the soft covers. You right. Know? The so it's gonna be a little bit slower. Okay. But but I'm guessing if it's popular, that will ramp up. Oh, they will <laughs> say like I I forget someone asked. I think if if there'd be adventure card game, they'd be like. Um. No plans, but I mean, <laughs> if it shows, you know, we're listening. <laughs> right, right. The other big things I think for Pathfinder fans would like, they're doing a lot more support for the society. They actually made a special new thing for kids like, called uh, Academy. Huh. Pathfinder Society Academy, which is cool. And when I mean kids, I mean like... Uh, Little babies? Eight, like eight. That's I think cool. it was five to 12 was the age. Get them Because young. <laughs> the starter set is 12 and up because, you know, it has pieces that kids could technically choke on. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But so, yeah, it sounds really cool. I mean... Going into space and the horror stuff, like, totally different worlds to explore. Now, I will say this with the space one, which will excite some, upset others. Mm -hmm. They did no say... No dice in this one. <laughs> they said dice act directly. <laughs> However, uh, one, they, it's a little bit more simpler. They're trying to keep you actually smaller than the other core book. Okay. So, like, I think you have less... They said less, like, traits and abilities mm -hmm. or scores to check, worry about. And it is built in more of a Star Wars Star uh, Firefly universe than a Star Trek universe. Oh. Yeah. So, well, you know. It's I a, think it fits better that way. It yeah, makes sense. It's an adventure RPG, yes. not a adventure smart RPG. <laughs> I don't know how you, how you differentiate those two. But it sounds like a lot of cool stuff, a lot of stuff rolling out soon. And I will also say that on the cover, I mean, we can put up a picture, or you'll mm. probably see it everywhere. There is someone uh, carrying it. I, I did hear someone talking about this. It's not a lightsaber. It's like a proton blade, I yeah, believe was the phrase. Okay, yeah, it's a, it's a beam sword <laughs> yes. or something like that. A laser I, sword. <laughs> uh, so that sounds, all that stuff sounds awesome. Uh, yeah, it's cool to see them keeping things fresh. I feel like Paizo check that stuff out. Yeah. The other uh, one that we're going to talk about today that's the other big one, you can see... One of their games behind us is AEG. We're sponsored by Mystic Veil vale today. Not really. <laughs> but We were lucky that we got a copy from them, which is awesome. That's this right. Is one, if you recall when we first talked about it, loved the idea, loved it. So this is available so now, so we're not going to delve into it, but we'll give you our thoughts later. Um, and we're not really going to talk too much about any of their n new games today, because I'm sure we'll see some on the floor, but... They kind of just did a cursory overview of what's coming out of this show. The Smash Up, uh, Mystic Veil vale expansion is coming. So a bunch of cool stuff. But the big announcement that they made was this new initiative called Kick It Here, uh, which involves allowing friendly local gaming stores, brick and mortar, to bring in Kickstarter pre-orders through their store as opposed to online, which we will get into. And in addition to that... The first game that's going to take off with this is the third edition of Thunderstone. Kind of a big deal, because that's been out of print for a long time. Yeah, at least a couple of years. Um, and it's, you know, that's, that's a pretty big game with a lot of expansions that a lot of people like. And it's also, 
Yeah, interesting because you know uh, AEG Justice continued to Doomtown, so it's interesting to see they're maybe they're bringing that back in, kind of to help fill that gap a little bit. So the new Kickstarter thing, there were a lot of questions about it, a lot of discussion about the good and bad of it. But basically, they they want to change the relationship between Kickstarters, publishers, and retailers, and. It's, I guess it's good for consumers in a way, but it really is more for retailers, right? I well, mean, here's the, the thing. For people we as consumers this, yeah. like Kickstarter because it's sort of pre-ordering, but you feel like I'm part of the process, you know? Mm -hmm. And then you also get stretch goals and stuff. And plus, you know, you just sign your computer, click. Right. Which is one <laughs> of the big arguments. But the problem is that sort of if you're a local gaming store, no one's going to buy the product. Then you don't get that order. money because they bought it before you even had a chance, before the game existed. Right. Uh, so so the, the idea is to eliminate that Right. Is to try to help bring the customers into the store. And they're going to do a lot of things like promotional items, posters and stuff, which would be really cool. I will say, I mean, we, I know, having our store at realforcrit.com, have received customer inquiries about future Kickstarters saying, hey, are you going to have this Kickstarter game available? When could I Could I actually even pre-order it through you? So it's, I think it is something that a lot of consumers will like if they have a store that's like their favorite store, that they'll be able to you know, have the, continue that relationship, that interaction. Well, I think the other thing to point out, which mm -hmm. I think is really interesting, is this is the first time I think I heard of a big... Borging. Like, we've seen, this isn't the first time Big Borging Company's hit a Kickstarter. For sure, In no. fact, <laughs> I, it, I think it's the fact, this is why EG, they're like, look at all the, like, you know, Cryptozoic, Ghostbusters and stuff. Cryptozoic, but none products. of them have brought it up. These guys came to the retailers like, look, we understand, but the Kickstarter's gonna come in, so we're gonna find a way to help you just as much as it helps us. Which yeah. is, I think, a really good thing, because it means that they're gonna pay attention to both customer, retailer, and themselves. It really, sh it was really refreshing to see them be really open and honest with people and straightforward and open to feedback and suggestions, which was really cool. Uh, if you actually, they live streamed it. I'm not sure if you go on their website if they've saved it somewhere. You might actually be able to watch their actual announcement uh, to get the full details. But overall, it sounds like a positive thing to me. I, th I think it's, it's very, you know, this whole Kickstarter retailer consumer relationship is definitely still in kind of a weird growing phase i don't know how it's going to end up in a year or three uh but this could be the start of a big change for how people buy Expect, kickstarter games yeah at least from big publishers mm -hmm. um yeah so hopefully we'll get a chance to check out more of their games later but that was really the focus of that thing mm -hmm. uh any other notes either about paizo or ag or just in general about our first day back in Indiana that uh, you can think of you want to mention before no, we go? Overall, um, really great. All the interesting stuff from Paizo. Uh, definitely excited to see what AG comes coming with this and really sort of testing waters for the industry on this. Um, and of course, very excited about playing this and the future <laughs> expansion in the world that's coming from. Um, plenty of other things, of course, that we know we maybe saw a little bit, but not really enough to talk about because we're hoping to actually get the play on the floor. Yes, lots more stuff. We just scratched the surface. This is your very much of a teaser. You can look forward to stuff uh, in the videos in the coming days from Fantasy Flight, Asmo Day, Upper Deck, uh, the USAopoly Harry Potter game, um, the new Ticket to Ride game, hopefully and many things that we probably haven't even thought about to mention yet. Please follow us on Twitter at roll for crit because you're going to find all this stuff being posted about constantly. And then tomorrow, we're going to start rolling out our mini videos where we're going to get to some of those awesome games and our impressions of them. Right. But for now, we have to prepare for the early rush in order to tell you about such That's things. That's right. So please let us go to sleep <laughs> to help you. Uh, I'm Jonathan Estes. And I'm Will Keeler. And this has been Gen Con 2016 with roll for crit